Hello and welcome to this continuing live coding series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. Today we'll be continuing on the Western Friend website. Western Friend is the official publication of Quakers in Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain yearly meetings. And those are large groups in the Western United States. I'm going to start off the session uh, and see how far I get in general with some tasks today, but start off with uh, dependency upgrade. If we go to Wagtail Admin, it shows us that Wagtail 2.5.1 has been released, and I've been neglecting this update as I've had some other <clears throat> sort of features under, under development. So let me actually add media to get ignore because I just reorganized the code base, <clears throat> code base a little bit and uh, had to re-upload some images. So if we go to get ignore here, basically I flattened the code base. Um, darn it, there it is. I had a, followed the guidelines of two scoops of Django and what they recommend is that projects, you put the Django source code in a subfolder of your Git repository. So uh, I followed that guideline and then recently I've been trying to uh, deploy to Heroku. And I want to set up an automated deploy just so while we're prototyping at the least we'll have a version of the website online. But I'm not sure really offhand how to get Heroku to do the automated deploys from a subfolder. The, proc file just lets you set up uh, you know the initialize command uh, you can run migrations I believe in this as well and then our docker file this came out of uh, actually straight from wagtail so I'm wondering actually if Heroku even uses this docker file I'm not sure <laughs> but it's all a learning process in any case uh, I think it's just easier right now for me to flatten the repo put the project in the root so that means there's a little bit more noise here with the docker file the proc file manage pi and all that but uh, that way I can just focus on development for now and get a uh, version deployed so that it can be tested out okay so let's go ahead and commit this and just uh, ignore media this in this case I do because I forgot to click the plus button to stage the commit all right cool now <clears throat> I'm not sure how good pip does at constraint solving but if I do pip install it's update update wax upgrade And do a pip freeze to our requirements file. Let's see what changes there. Okay, just Wagtail. So that does get us the latest version of Wagtail. I'm also getting some errors. I don't know if that anything changed there, just Wagtail. On the GitHub repository for this project, we're getting errors about security vulnerability. I check these out we don't have this really deployed in a meaningful way it's just a prototype uh, but I'd like to keep our updates our libraries secure at least it says URL lib 3 is out of date so I should be updating to greater than or equal to 1.24.2 so I think that's a safe update do these as separate commits in case, I don't know, I need to roll one back or whatever. <clears throat> I'm not really sure how to just, oh, three, uh, how to just keep these general dependencies up to date. It's possible that some of these were bumped. I think PIP would probably track those, though. I'm not sure. Uh, 
Let's check out the Wagtail repo. And essentially I'll check for requirements text or is it in here in setup yeah I don't know if there's a one command one command way to update these and all the uh, related dependencies that will uh, resolve the constraints uh, I don't want to exceed the recommended versions and I've had troubles um, in the past when I've just sort of blanket, did a blanket upgrade of everything, particularly things that have, you know, uh, major version changes. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> hmm. And I'm wondering, as an aside, if this poetry is a, it's a really generic one, is really generic, uh, sorry, it's another dependency manager for Python. It uses a lock file, so it's reproducible. It has a dependency resolver. I don't think I'm ready to wholesale switch over to poetry right now. Um, Pipend was another one that sort of tried to become the, the du jour Python package manager. I'll stick with pip, but it would be nice to be able to um, just do a blanket check. Oh, I think it just closed the tab. Yeah, so I did want to look at that pip list outdated. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I'm already having everything's outdated basically. Hmm. Yeah, all right, so this is what I ran as a pip upgrade. But it really just broke things, I believe. What does this do? See, that's a pretty big upgrade there. Significant version. Django tag it is used internally by Wagtail for creating keyword uh, taggable collections, I believe. That's a significant version of it there with Pillow. Yeah, and if I just compare this list a little bit against, again, the Wagtail requirements. So let's see. Tag it. Less than one o, so yeah. If I if I just run this blanket upgrade, we'll we'll have some breaking stuff. So it looks like this pip upgrade is not going to resolve the constraints for me. Okay, I will not run that. Anything I can just minor version stuff is good. This draft JS stuff I think is good to get. I would like to upgrade Tango, Django for Tango with Django. Yeah, it's all we did here was URL lib, just for the security upgrade.
Right. Maybe it's going to be resolved soon. No pun, well, pun intended, I guess I'll just take credit for silly puns. All right, well, let's get to the, well, actually, that was the, the main thing with the upgrade. So it looks like we should do some actual development now. Sorry if I'm making microphone noises in my desks a little bit. Uh, disorganized. this issue. No, that's different. Okay, so this is an active thing. Oh, well, this is good. I didn't know it. it will actually complain when it breaks the dependency graph. So does this pip upgrade just not... Uh, Let me upgrade Django. Oh boy. Because I believe this Wagtail release also made itself compatible with Django 2.2. We, we updated everything now. We'll come back to this issue of PIP constraints solving in a couple of months. See how things are going. Let's load the server up and see if it picked up that change. Was that requests version at, uh, upgrade? Maybe if I upgrade requ requests, what's this even coming from? Well, 2.22. I'm gonna remove pip upgrade. Well, it was actually kind of hand handy, but I mean, 
people that's outdated was good enough. So I'll go ahead and do this request upgrade. I hope I'm not just leading myself down a trail of broken dependencies. No warnings. Good. If we refresh this page, it should go away. I don't remember. There's a whole list of things that were improved in uh, Wagtail 2.5, so just good to have that. Project up to date. Yeah, Django 2 support, 2.2 support. Just a lot of good stuff. I don't know <laughs> how I'll use any or most of it, but this project's pretty impressive. The uh, the rate of development and the kind of quality of the responses I've gotten on GitHub when I've come up uh, with a question or idea, and they don't take the ideas always, but that's fine. They don't have to, and they'll just give me a thoughtful response as to why it might not be. Uh, kind of compatible with the vision of Wagtail. So that's a learning opportunity. They have this nice document, the Zen of Wagtail, uh, to which I was referred when I made a request that basically I said, hey, uh, could you implement this Drupal feature in Wagtail? And they said, well, basically, we believe that the best user interface for a programmer is usually a programming language, language whereas Drupal has, uh, to a large extent, made a lot of things available by a point and click. So there's a little bit of a balance there. But then I, in re retrospect, have realized that what I really needed in my request is fulfilled by this um, Wagtail stream field. It more or less gives you a UI that you can have a page building uh, UI. You can define a, a page type and a series of these blocks that can be combined in this stream field in any order and that's what we needed cool let's see so i'm going to merge this re uh, pull request now what i'm going to focus in on today is just some kind of cleanup work from the last couple of sessions um we have uh, some content hierarchy basically where the page model in Wagtail uh, starts, you know, with like one or more, more or less top level pages. You have a root page, uh, and this is actually the site root, and underneath that are a number of other pages. And these pages can be of various types, and they can allow for children pages, for child pages. And you can constrain the types of pages that can be created below a page. So uh, in, or, or in effect, basically what you're doing is giving content managers a really uh, organized way or a constrained way of organizing content, a spe specific organizational approach, sort of like separating knives and forks and spoons in the silverware drawer. So what I started in the community directory implementation is allowing everything to be created right here at this top level. So uh, more or less contacts, people, meetings, and organizations were all uh, could be child uh, 
uh, pages of this community directory. And since then, I've added a feature or refined a feature called resources. And these resources can be of two forms, community directories and online worship groups. And the way I implemented those features was they, they go into the community section, but they have index pages, or I guess a, there's probably a better word than index page, but essentially it's a page that all of the online group worship groups would be added under, oh darn it, or all of the community directories would be added under. So when you hit, when you go here, you'll have a listing of all of those. Similarly, you know, you can define these menu items that just list everything like, uh, let's go to contact where we have more. Uh, so that, that's a convenient way of organizing stuff as well. Now, let's say I want to add a person. When I click add a person, Wagtail just shows me the edit person form in this case because it knows right where people can be defined. And in that case, it's actually people can be defined only under the community page. There's Mary Klein. But what I want to do is create a sub page called people and then have people underneath that. Um, whereas if I add a meeting, Wagtail is going to ask me, well, what should be the parent page? And meetings always have to be defined under the community. But meetings can also have child parent child relationships. These yearly meetings typically have some uh, quarterly meetings underneath them. Uh, this is all the same. Uh, and the quarterly meetings then can have monthly meetings. So a number of those monthly meetings. <coughs> so that we won't be able to improve. It's going to have a similar workflow. You have to pick a parent meeting. Uh, but you can do that through an organized navigation menu. So that's uh, basically an introduction to what I'm going to be trying to achieve today. Reorganizing the content model. I might have to delete some content. And I may even end up um, destroying all our migrations and just re... Uh, running the, the make migrations command because I've done a lot of work and have migrations that are no longer relevant and this is a prototype site so I can just clean stuff up like that without adverse effect. All right, so let's hop over to GitHub. We'll open a small pull request. Hmm. What? Oh, because I haven't run this pull request. Oh, no, I see. I thought for some reason I had checked to get VS Code in. No, I added the media ignore. Yeah, that's right. That is correct. So, of course, I approve it. I'm kind of working solo on this. We've got a couple of people who have agreed to sort of observe and read the code and maybe be early beta testers. So that's pretty exciting. The other thing was to and I had previously tried this update dependencies and I ended up with broken everything because the resolution doesn't resolve the uh, constraints, the version constraints. Okay. So let's just go ahead and create a branch in the UI. We'll 
clean up the content model. It'll be a brief tour through the content model and the community directory. And we'll have to create a couple of index pages to hold these. So let's go. Now these are actually contacts. So they're in our contact models, even though they're part of the community app in a way that the way they're organized is. So for a person, we'll need a person index. Meeting, we'll need meeting index. Organization, we'll need organization index. The reason I'm going to, for now, define basically model specific indexes is so that I can explicitly say an organization should be only allowed under the organization index, so the parent page types. Um, if I just did wag, uh, wagtail page, then it could be added anywhere. And community page is too high level up, high level. I can't, in the code at least, specify a constraint other than to um, a model, basically, that inherits page. Or otherwise, I think you can use regular Django models, but I'm not exactly sure. And so there'll be a little bit of boilerplate here. Because on the index pages, we'll typically list stuff that this may or may not be visible. And so I may or may not need to do the template. And we're not running Wagtail right now. On server, there we go. But I'll show you a real quick example of an index page. Uh, community directories, or well, critical organizations has a few of those. It's just basically a listing in you can, so I can take that markup if needed. Might be useful. We might th think of a, a more elegant way of listing these at some point. So let's see, organization index page I've already got. And that's right here. So maybe this is the good, that's the one we're looking at, right? Yes. This is probably the good one. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that's right. I defined that as a block. It's not visible here, but here it is. It's this empty block. Uh, this is another improvement I'll need to make. Uh, Wagtail will let you up or manually override this editing edit form. They call it. Even though I don't though I don't need a edit form because this is simply. This block was defined simply to run a query and populate that organization's table in a template. So there's no configuration option. But defining it as a wagtail page lets us use this stream field, which then I can say, I want the organizations above the text right there. I can publish that and view it live. And then there it is, the organizations are displayed above the text. Um, it's not quite a drag and drop you are editable in place UI, but it's pretty close to what I was mentioning earlier that Drupal gives you with a combination of views and pages. This is essentially a hard coded view, which is pretty, pretty appropriate, I believe. Uh, one other side, this contact was a, de it's a deprecated model, but I can't really delete it from the wagtail database. Uh, I just don't know how. And so if I squash all of these migrations or delete them all, I can just clean up things like this, which actually might be a good place to start, come to think of it. Let me see what would be the direction I went ahead. It would require me to, to create all this dummy data, so I will not start there. I will take the approach. Hmm. I don't know that we'll need front end views for our contacts. Like generically, I don't believe we're going to just display a list of meeting some people.
those are interwoven through other places of the website. So I don't believe I need to do the exact same thing we did here with the organization page. Organization index page, but I do want most of it. So it's following the organization. So here I'll follow the meeting. I want to start getting in the habit of explicitly defining the template variable, even if it's not used or not this. Uh, well, let's see. So the meeting index page can be added underneath the community page and have meetings underneath of it. So let's go over here to contacts, meetings, and I believe I should not delete them. I will move them in just a moment. So if I come up here to meeting, the parent page types are currently two. I will add community meeting index page. I have to run that migration for that to work. So before I do that, well, actually, let's just run it. Hmm. Yeah, it's contact. data, commit that in get. Repeat that real quick. So that's good. Just wanted to check if I'll be able to easily find that. Underneath the person, I will repeat this index page. Oh, you know what? I didn't want all those fields. Well, it's a stream field. Keeps our code a little cleaner. Get a little bit of tea real quick. Yes, 
I'm just going to remove these fields so I don't get too unorganized here. Oh. Right, right. Yes. I also have to delete the widget. Now that I didn't get you know too eager and delete all this content like I was thinking about for a minute, I should be able to actually go to community page and there's more this default page browser gives you a lot more you know kind of nice features inline buttons to add child or view the children. Okay, so what we do want to do is move this to Uh, wait, 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 not that. Darn it. I've got to read carefully. This yearly meeting will go under... Ah, right, right. I have to add a child page first. Okay, cool. So, bumped into a constraint issue. The community page doesn't allow currently for meeting index page or person index page as child page types. So, we'll just have to hop over to that, which is a good thing. That you have to explicitly say from both sides what the uh, allowed relationship is. Otherwise, um, it allows for any page to be added as a parent or child, which is also pretty flexible, but we want to keep things organized. So we have a community page right here. And for sub page types, we're going to, we're phasing these out. in a little bit stricter hierarchy. Now if I refresh this page, we'll see these index pages are now visible there. So let's go ahead and add that to the meetings. Head child page. People. And there's organizations and community directories. So it looks like they don't have a bulk update. You'll notice that some of these are grayed out. So that's a little bit cumbersome, but okay. Wish they had a bulk update, that would be nice. But I believe by virtue of moving these parent uh, meetings, like Pacific Yearly Meeting, the child meetings will be moved as well. Let's try that one real quick. Yeah, Pacific Yearly Meeting and it maintain this child relationship. So that's kind of cool. Intermountain Yearly Meeting, move, over, move, move, move. There it is. Wagtail also, you know, comes up with a lot of stuff out of the box. It's really nice meetings. There we go. We got the meetings organized. So we go back to the community page. And yeah, it's got this, you know, this move functionality. I forget why I was mentioning that. Okay, people though. Oh yeah, just it, you know, graying out the places where you can't put it and stuff like that. Maybe it would be nice if I actually didn't show those. Uh, so what's going on here? People. I have to check my contact model constraints. Person. Ah, uh, there we go. Forgot to do that. Community page, this should be contact. I believe I can just put it here directly and not, since it's already been added, it won't complain. And if I 
Whoops. Oh, no, I had to F5 over here. Darn it. I keep doing that. I want to hit F5 over here. Okay, no problem. <laughs> F5 here. Yeah, there we go. And just This is a cool thing. When you keep state in the URL, uh, it lets you kind of do things and come back to them. I think we lose that when we move state into the template or things like that. Uh, this is an important part of our app. I believe we should lean on it a little bit for actions like moving pages around. Because you can see I just had to refresh the page and I'm right where I left off. And, and now I have the right selection here. All right, so I'll go back to community. And now I can't move Mary, you know, anywhere under the community page, really, basically. I guess it couldn't gray them out because there's sub pages, but the only place, you know, people can be added is right here. They can't be, uh, it's not a hierarchical model. So I will cancel the operation. Go back to the community. Uh, this is a quick organization. Let's move that. All right, so this is one other place I left off. After the crash, I'm able to recover because the URL, the state was covered in the URL, and I still have my session. Really cool. Now our community. So this is our community is a lot cleaner. This is a better content organization. Um, approach, I believe. So organizations are there. Online worship is here, etc. Meetings are here, and they can have child meetings and their child meetings. Really cool. Okay, so let's just go ahead and one more thing to clean these up. So organization index page. Yeah. Community page. So any of the index pages should be added under community. I'm wondering if I should glump all my index pages together or keep them alternated between the entity that they sort of index. And probably be alphabetized, alphabetized. Meetings cannot, no longer be added beneath the community page. I think this is a good improvement. Changes in a couple of files. And the last one I want to do is clean these. Three sub page types. Basically, it's constrained simplicity. Now, here comes the fun part. I'm going to get rid of these because I got uh, models that are no longer existent except in some meta table within Wagtail.
All right, cool. Sorry for the delay there. I was looking at my stream. I didn't see the. I don't see the broadcast length. I just enabled this stream elements, and I'm not sure if it kind of tweaked my lay my dashboard layout or, or what happened here. Um, so let's do this. This thing. This is going to be a little bit destructo, and I'll probably call it good for this session. done that many times but what it means is now I have to there's probably a much better way of going about this but in any case delete the database go through each of my models and I, I'm not really attached to these migrations necessarily but you can't do this in production so Type if I had deployed this and actually I'll have to redeploy it on the Heroku as well. Contact migrations. Event. Migrations. I'll set up more fixtures in a minute. Uh, maybe not today, although that would have saved me some time. a lot of apps in this project. Streams didn't need any migration. Okay. Manage. Oh, wait.
Oh, nice. I see. Yeah. That's strange. Something is still looking for the contact model. I mean, I just got to be able to get rid of these old models that are no longer in use. This is ridiculous. I've looked, I've searched for this several times. I, I can find articles on deleting sort of fields and such like that, but not for actually the model, deleting the model. Yeah, I'm trying to delete the contact model, I'm trying to get rid of it. Where is this coming from? Base registry. Well, I'm at a loss. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to just roll them all back. Damn. I thought I could just take care of two nice things in one PR. Get rid of these. I'll do one more search. Django delete model. We'll delete a record. Things to do when remove a model from Django 1.7 plus 2017 relatively recently. This could be the case. Something's importing it. All right, so let's try this. Delete the code. Make sure nothing else imports from it. Run make migrations. And I get this error. App contact doesn't have a contact model. References to it are in migrations. The app can be named contact. Migration, 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 migration. 
and I want this to be case sensitive actually. That's different. This could be it. The library item still points to the old collection. Aha! No mean. I left that one. This should now be updated in the same way I did the magazine article. Okay. Now I'm getting a little bit closer in to solving the puzzle. If I, remove, if I reset this, let me see if I can just clean up those other two. Uh, these community resources, that should let me do that. Yes, okay, so the whole time it was my fault. No wonder people, not many people are searching for that. It's pretty straightforward to delete a, a Django model. this trace back it was pointing to this well it's autocomplete I guess I could have zeroed in on it there <laughs> yeah, and I deleted the whole database oh no oh no one I just generated. If I just do this, and these. Uh, migrations get interwoven, so it's difficult to just like delete migrations in one app. Hmm. All right, let's hope my, let me delete the database again and see if this has borked it uh, before I commit this. Good, so, okay, there it is. It applies it early in the list. So yeah, the strange error above, you know, saying something wrong with SQL syntax, syntax error, uh, and it might've been, I don't know what, but for some reason it was trying to delete a field when really it should just have been focusing on deleting the database. So maybe, um, the sequence in which those were, done threw it off but yeah definitely was pointing to this um migration so okay well, i think we're good to go 
essentially we just okay we'll commit push that okie dokie I think we're good to go yeah so that's been I don't know about about a one hour session something I don't know how long we were streaming here don't don't have a don't have a clock in uh, Twitch anymore since adding stream elements. Anyway, this has been another episode of our continuing live coding series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and a Wagtail CMS. We've been working on the Western Web front website, which is not running here. Made some good progress over the last few weeks and went through some pretty challenging code. Today was just a, more or less a cleanup and kind of adding some constraints to our content model. I appreciate the people who joined on Twitch today. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please do uh, feel free to ask any questions or make any comments down there in the comment section. I will respond to those promptly when I get the notice. All right, well, thanks again for watching and have a great day.